So in Elden Ring, you're going to come across things that annoy you. Whether it's a mob, boss, weapon, or whole area, there's always going to be something. And for me personally, there is one weapon class that never ceases to get on my nerves. And the weapon class I'm talking about is whips. There's a total of six whips in the game, and I'm going to be showing off each and every one of them just for you guys. You're going to get to see the true potential of the danger noodles, as well as some of their very cool and unique designs. And also a little bit of insight as to why I find them so annoying, but we'll get to that. For now, let's just get to the round table. So the first whip that I'm using is just the normal whip. I'm going with Keen Affinity with Beast Roar. And obviously, if you're using a whip, you have a boatload of range. So the two-hand light attack string is uh, about what you'd expect. You just lash your whip out. And also, the end of this string doesn't really have a lot of recovery to it, so it's not hard to just go right back into attacking once you're done with the entire thing. As for the heavy attacks, here you go. Second one has a lot of range. You got the rolling attack, got the backstep attack, which honestly I think is really cool. You like grab the whip and then snap it down. And I do actually have a setup later on that does involve power stancing whips, but for now I'm just gonna two hand this first one here. So a couple things to note about whips. They cannot be parried. You also cannot get critical hits with them. Meaning if like you landed a parry on somebody, you would not be able to critical hit them. Uh, you can't get backstabs with them, all that. Yeah. Seriously, if this guy had any sort of semi-heavy armor on, I would not be able to stagger him. I like his build though. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey, hey, good fight, dude. All right, even though we won that fight, I'm going to be honest, two-handing a whip feels a little bit just mediocre, I guess. I mean, the damage wasn't great, but obviously the range sort of makes up for that. I don't know, power stancing may just be the way to go. However, I'm not going to give up on two-handing whips just yet. Here I have the thorned whip with blood affinity and quick step. And as for the moveset, it is the exact same as the last whip. This is the light attack string that literally every single whip has. As for the heavy attacks and stuff, there is an exception that we'll get to later. And personally, I do really like the look of the thorned whip. It, it kind of just feels badass to have in your hands. You're literally just gripping thorns. And I'm thinking with this setup, you know, with like the extra mobility from quick step and you have the innate bleed that is also increased by bleed affinity. I, th I think this will be a lot better to two hand than the normal whip. Oh my God. Hey, it seems like the first heavy attack can miss pretty easily if you try to go for like a roll catch. Oh, damn it. All right, let's bust out this quick step. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, quick step. I like it. The damage isn't crazy. I think we might proc bleed with this next hit. Oh, there we go, baby. Good fight, PK. Okay, so this setup, definitely a lot better than the last one. I really like the innate bleed on this whip. I, I, I think it just makes the weapon so much better having a status effect on it. So honestly, I'm 100% a fan of this setup. I think you can uh, two hand this. You don't need to power stance them. Okay, now forgive me for this next setup. Things are about to get a little bit toxic. I'm sorry in advance. Here I have two cold Hoslo's pedal whips with Raptor of the Mists on each of them. You get a nice 105 frost buildup and you get some blood loss buildup as well. And as for the power stance move set, here you go. Got the jumping attack, which is really nice. Got the rolling attack. And the sprinting attack is very good too. Oh, and then of course you have the back step attack as well. Now the first piece of insight that I'm gonna give you guys as to why I think uh, whips are so annoying is uh, of course the range. I mean, the range is pretty obnoxious. You can literally outspace anything you want. 
Oh wait, this is Slave Knight Gale? Hey, I never played DS3, but I've seen the boss fight. Gotta be one of the coolest boss fights I've ever seen. But yeah, the range is just very, very obnoxious. You can play extremely safe. Damn, dude, he is hard to hit. Nice, there we go. We already proc'd Frost. God, dude, it just procs so quickly. And it, it, it's just so easy to proc. That's the other thing. Because of the absurd range of whips, proccing status effects is insanely easy. Here, let's see if I can hit a Raptor's attack here. Because this is the main part of the build that I wanted to show. Oh, he went for the backstab, dude. I had a feeling he was going to do that. Okay, so we did not get to hit a Raptor's attack there, which does kind of suck. But the idea is you want to keep Raptor of the Mist in your pocket, and then you want to wait for your opponent to use, like, a high recovery Ash of War or, like, a charged heavy attack, just something with a lot of recovery. And then you pull out Raptor of the Mist, you get the jumping attack, you hit both your whips, you most likely get Insta Frost proc as well, if not close. And there are times where you can just kind of throw it out willy-nilly because it can also cause people to panic roll, and you can just easily roll catch them. Anyways, next we have the Yurumi, and honestly, I think this is the best whip overall. It is insanely good. I'm going to run one fight, two-handing it with Lightning Affinity and Lightning Ram, and then I'll Power Stance two of them with Keen Affinity and Raptor of the Mist, because this weapon actually gets S scaling in Dex when you do have Keen Affinity. And as for the moveset, you know it's all the same as the other whips, except for the very unique heavy attacks. And yes, those attacks do double hit, and they do really, really good damage whenever you land them. All right, who we got here? Alv de Valve. Wait, Alv, Alv de Dalve. Alv de Dalve, got it. I could probably just kill you with Lightning Ram, but I'm not going to do that yet. Oh, that missed. What? Wait, that looks so weird. What? Nice. <laughs> yeah, just skirt right around that. Too easy. Okay, this lag is pretty atrocious, I'm not gonna lie. And I think this weapon is just so cool because it's basically like... Like, just a malleable sword. Come on. Listen, dude. It's over for you. We can drag this out all day. You really thought that Bloodhound step could save you, huh? <laughs> but no, nah, I totally understand why he brought that out. I mean, like I said in the beginning of the video, whips are annoying. We got out of the storm stomp. That's kind of nice. That's actually a really good counter. Good fight. And just like that, they're gone, man. <laughs> like, it's it's just so powerful. You know, and obviously this is going to be a better setup against, like, heavier, slower weapons. Like, I'll tell you right now, quick weapons are just very, very good against whips, where you can just squeeze in attacks between the whip user's attacks. Kind of like that one guy tried to do with a uh, Bloodhound Step and the Thrusting Sword. Those types of matchups can be very, very hard. And honestly, the Yurumi is so cool, you would think it's an enchanted weapon. And speaking of enchanted weapons, there are two whips left that are the only enchanted whips. But before we get into those, a quick reminder to click that subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you'd like to see more in the future. Now, the first enchanted whip that I'm using is the Magma Whip Candlestick. And yes, it is just a bedazzled, bejeweled candlestick. And on this weapon, you get some nice dex and faith scaling, as well as the unique Ash of War Sea of Magma. And here is what that looks like. Whee! You can literally just hold down the Ash of War button and it just doesn't stop until you run out of FP. And I mean, as for the moveset, all of it is just 
the basic whip moveset. And I have actually never touched this weapon a single time since I've been playing Elden Ring. Um, I frankly, I don't see anybody use this weapon at all. I think if you look at both PvE and PvP, this is probably one of the least used weapons in the entire game. Tarnished, hello. Got the pickaxe. You don't want none of this. <laughs> yes, burn! Ooh, you got waves of darkness on that? That's nice. Good fight. And I'm not gonna lie, dude. This, uh, this kind of felt nice. I mean, I, I feel like it's a total meme weapon. Especially the Ash of War. I think in PvE, it would be good just for clearing out mobs and stuff. But hey, I mean, in terms of PvP, this is just one of the goofiest things you can use and one of the goofiest Ashes of War that you can go for. When it's all said and done, though, I, I, I actually kind of enjoyed using this. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Giant's Red Braid. Scales B in Strength, D in Dex, and B in Faith. And this is one of my personal favorite weapons in the entire game. The Ash of War Flame Dance is, is just so, so clean. In PvE, you can just take out a ton of mobs with it. It's very, very fluid, very nice to use. And as for the moveset, there is nothing unique about it. But no, the Ash of War is just a boatload of fun and multi-combat. It's, it's not bad in duels but I, I, I definitely say it's better in multi-combat. And it is a late game weapon, which does kind of suck. But hey, if you want to go for something flashy, this is definitely a good weapon to use. Who we got here? Mr. Duramito. Hello. Oh, you got Wakazashi and Rivers. You got the full Okina setup. Very nice. Oh, oh, just took him out of the air, bro. And this is kind of what the Ash of War does. It almost creates a bubble for you. You know what I mean? And if people get inside that bubble, they're kind of screwed, except he just jumped it, which was clean. Oh, close. Ooh, there we go, baby. Finish it off with the Ash. Good fight, man. And yeah, that's the Giant's Red Braid. The Ash of War is disgusting. If you get this Ash of War off and catch multiple people in it, it is one of the most satisfying things you can land in the entire game. I, I, I will die on that hill. This weapon is sick. But I will still die on the hill that whips are very annoying. And if you use them against me, I am going to judge you slightly. Just kidding. But that is going to be the end of the whips. Feel free to comment down below what your favorite whip is. If I had to pick one, it's between the Yurumi and the Giant's Red Braid. I think the Red Braid honestly has the edge just because of the Ash of War. I really am in love with this weapon. And I think the worst whip by far just has to be the normal whip. You have no innate status effect, nothing unique about it. Just really bad scaling across the board. I don't think it's worth using over the other whips. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you guys for all your support. I really, really appreciate it. Just stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video.